Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we will learn how to set up Flower, a real time monitoring tool for salary background tasks, which provides us with a separate user interface. And additionally, we will see how to add our database as a results backend. These tools can provide useful insights whether the background tasks were run and completed successfully. But before we get started, if you like this content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and share it with people so it can be discovered and help others as well. And if you consider supporting me also financially, head over to patreon.com slash Andreas chat. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate you. Okay, and now without further ado, let's dive in. Okay. In the last video, at the very end, we shut down Redis, so it doesn't run in the background on our machine unnecessarily. But we need Redis again in this video, so let's start it up again. With Pru services start Redis. Okay, we successfully started Redis. And with Pru services info Redis, we can check if Redis is loaded and running. Okay. Next, we run our salary worker. This is the salary worker command and dash E stands for events. And it is very important to turn this on as we want salary to send events to flower for task monitoring. And dash L info locks information to our salary terminal. But with flower implemented, we could also leave it out. All right, the salary worker is now up and running. I let it running in this terminal and open a new one. So I click here on plus. Let's rename the other terminal to salary. Okay, and now let's install Flower. And Flower is a real time monitoring tool for background tasks and it will give us a user interface where we can see a lot of data related to the salary tasks and workers. And we install this package with pip install flower. And this is all we have to do for the installation. So flower is a separate application and we run it with the command salary dash a for application and we call here our salary application, which in my project is in a underscore core dot salary underscore app. We defined this in the previous video in the salary.py file. And then we add the argument flower. Okay. And enter. So with this command flower is now up and running and we can visit the flower user interface at this URL, so at our local host column 5555. Okay, let's check it out. We let flower now run in this terminal. Let's rename it. And now we run our main Django application in a new terminal with Python manage the Py run server. Okay, let's check out the website first. Localhost colon 8000. Sign in. And our website is up and running. Now let's access Flower. Localhost colon 5555. And this is the Flower interface. As we can see here, we have our salary worker. It can run six tasks simultaneously, so in parallel. And we can see here that the pool size is one. So we are working with one worker at the moment. So Flower gives us here a lot of insight what's going on in the background. Then under the broker tab, we can see that we're using Redis. And if you go to tasks, it is empty right now, but we will see here our tasks. Let's test this now. Let's add a new message to our message board and let's see if this works. So 
So flower test. And as we can see, we have three active towns right now and they are being processed. And now they are all finished and all three succeeded. Awesome. Let's inspect the task page. And we can see here the three tasks with the success status. We can also give the task a custom name. We will see how this is done in a second. Then we have here the unique task ID, the status, the arguments which were passed through. Then we have here the results. At the moment we do not display any results, but we will see how we can do this also in a second. Then when the task was received and started, and here we can see the runtime, how long it took to process them. And as our worker can handle up to six tasks simultaneously, those tasks ran in parallel, and it took 8.06 seconds in total. All right, let's extend now our task with a custom name and return a result. So I'm heading to my task to be Wi file in the message board folder. Here we have our send email task, and to give it a name, we just add next to the decorator in parentheses name equals, and then we can write here the name of this task in lowercase and underscores. I call this task email notification. Okay, and to display a result, we add a return statement. And as a result, I would like to display the recipient's email address. But we have here a small conflict, because our object is called email as well as our parameter. This is a classic case for variable shadowing, where one variable shadows another one. To make sure we return the address as a string and not as the object, I changed the name of the parameter to email address. and return the email address. All right, save this file. Now that we add some changes to the salary task, we need to restart the salary worker again, so the changes are loaded. So I'm going to salary, shut it down with Control C, and start the worker up again. All right, let's check it out. I add a new message, flower test 2, still processing, and now we have six successful tasks. And as we can see, it added here the custom name for the task and the recipient's email address for the result. Nice! So, as we can see, this interface can contain a lot of sensitive data. So, on a live site, we have to protect it from unauthorized users. And a simple way to do this is to protect it with a username and a password. And we can set up our HTTP authentication directly from the flower command by adding the basic auth option. We will see how we can implement this on a live site securely in a future video. For now, let's test it locally. I'm going to my flower terminal, Ctrl C to shut down flower, and then to my command here, I add the basic auth option. Then I give it a username, for example, admin, colon, and then a password. Let's add flower123. Okay, and enter. Now Flower is up and running again, let's check it out. And now we have a sign-in pop-up here, where we add username and password. And we are logged in now. Great! But with the restart, as we can see, we lost our data. Because Flower by itself does not store the results. It gets the event sent from Redis, our message broker. 
Let's add now a results database to store the task results permanently. We can use Redis for this, but I will use our Postgres database so we can have an easy access through our admin interface. For this I'm installing now a salary results package with pip install django-salary-results. Then I have to add it to the installed apps in the settings top UI file. And we also have to add a salary result backend variable. And set it to Django db. And with the salary result extended variable, I have access to more information about the tasks. Okay, save this file. Now we have to do a migration. Python managed to pi migrate. This has added now tables to the database. And we also have to restart the salary worker again. So the worker is aware of the results backend. First shut down. And restart again. All right. Let's go to our admin interface and check it out. And for this, I have to restart the app again. Python manage the pi run server. And as we can see, we have here now a salary results section with a task results table. And for now, we have not stored any tasks yet. Let's post a new message. Results backend. I refresh the page. And the three tasks for the latest email notifications are stored now. We have here the task name, completion date, and task status. And on this page, we get more details about the task. For example, the arguments we used or the result data. All right, that's all for this video. Now we know about the very useful tools to monitor salary background tasks. In the next video, we will learn how to set up periodic tasks with Salary Repeat. For example, to send weekly or monthly newsletters. I hope to see you there. Until then, stay curious, my friends, and bye-bye for now.